For this lesson, you need to open the sample file First Quarter Sales and Profit 4 from your Sample Files folder. In this lesson, you'll select Contiguous and Non-Contiguous Cell Ranges. Non-contiguous is a very impressive word. It simply means a range of cells that's split across two or more blocks of cells in different parts of the worksheet. Non-contiguous ranges can be selected using both the mouse and the keyboard. The keyboard method may seem a little involved at first, but you'll find it much faster once you've got the hang of it. Let's begin by selecting cells using the mouse. To select the contiguous range, B4 to D8, I position the mouse cursor in the centre of cell B4, until I see the white cross cursor shape. I then click and hold the mouse button, and drag across to cell D8. And I've now selected the contiguous range, B4 to D8. But what if I wanted to select cells B4 to B8, the sales figures for January, along with the cells D4 to D8, the sales figures for March. If I select cells B4 to B8, and then try to select cells D4 to D8, when I click the mouse button, the original cells are deselected. Here's how it's done. I'll position the mouse cursor in the centre of cell B4, making sure I see the white cross cursor shape, and then click and drag down to B8. Now I hold down the control key on the keyboard, and select cells D4 to D8. And I've now selected the non-contiguous range, B4 to B8, along with D4 to D8. Now let's look at how we'd do each of these things, this time using the keyboard. I'll use the arrow keys on the keyboard to navigate the active cell to cell B4. Then I hold down the shift key on the keyboard and press the down arrow key four times. Then I'll press the right arrow key twice and I've selected the contiguous range B4 to D8 using only the keyboard. Next I'll select the non-contiguous range B4 to B8 along with D4 to D8 using the keyboard. This is a little involved. First of all, I'll use the arrow keys on the keyboard to bring the active cell to cell B4. Then I press the F8 key on the keyboard to tell Excel that I'm about to select a range. Then I press the down arrow key four times. Next, I press Shift F8 to tell Excel that I'm navigating to the beginning of a new range. Then I'll press the right arrow key twice to move to cell D4. Now I press the F8 key again to tell Excel I'm beginning to select cells again. And I press the down arrow key four times to select the range D4 to D8. And I finish off with Shift F8 just to tell Excel that I'm now done with selecting my non-contiguous range. Next, I'd like to introduce the status bar. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, you can see that there's an average, count and sum figure. These figures are based upon the currently selected cells. So this means that in January and March, my average sales per branch were 25,000 700. The next number, count 10, means that 10 cells are currently selected. And the final figure, sum, meaning total, means that my total sales for my five branches in January and March were 257,000. But the status bar can do even more than average, count and sum. If I right click on the status bar, you'll see that there's also a minimum and maximum option. So I'll click minimum and maximum, and then click away from the shortcut menu to close it. And you can now see that the minimum sales 
in January and March were 12,000. That would be Munich in January. And the maximum is 43,000. That'll be Los Angeles in March. You've now completed Lesson 27. Select Non-Contiguous Cell Ranges and View Summary Information.